Yo, we're back. I know it's been many months since I posted and uh, it's just been the craziest year ever. The reason I didn't, haven't posted recently is uh, when I first moved to LA almost two years ago, I was living with my grandpa. I quit my job in New York City and uh, moved out here to like help take care of him. He also, you know, gave me free rent and stuff and so I would help take care of him and pursue comedy. His place is where I was recording all the original videos and it was an amazing setup. The timing worked out perfectly and uh, I wouldn't have been able to survive without that job that I had, had it not been for him. And I have a full stand-up set that I'm gonna post that's about my grandpa and what it was like living with him. Uh, so yeah, it'll be nice having some stand-up on YouTube that isn't just about getting molested. <laughs> it was so fun, like hanging out with him and getting to know him way better than I ever did before. He was just like the coolest dude. He was so calm, collected, and women just loved him. And he was so nonchalant about it and just like a really, I, just, just a sweet guy. So he ended up passing away about a year ago, basically. And after he passed, it was weird because I never really had somebody that I knew really well that was close to me die. And it was really hard. Before that, I, I wasn't a very anxious person. I've always been just like a pretty upbeat guy. And something about that experience in particular, just I just became like so anxious. And I would have these anxiety attacks and I was definitely dealing with like depression and these things that I'd not dealt with before, you know, like even the molestation and, and the things that I went through, it's like it didn't affect me in the same way that my grandpa dying did. It, you know, it was my roommate. My roommate died. <laughs> so that was, I don't know, it just like, it just, it fucking really affected me and it became hard to do things. I'd find myself just sleeping all of the time, not wanting to get up. It just became hard to focus on things that I normally enjoyed doing, like making YouTube videos, podcasts, and doing stand-up and everything. It sort of consumed my thoughts and energy and attention, so it was hard. And then towards the end of the year, I went and did a meditation retreat. It's called Vipassana Meditation, that's the name of the, the technique, and they have these centers all around the world that you can go to and meditate for generally 10 days. It's completely silent, it's like around 60 people or maybe 40 people. It's completely free to do, all of the food is paid for, all of the lodging is paid for, and it's all run on donations from people who have done it in the past. So if that's not a confirmation of something, of, of showing that it works, you know, I don't know, it is. And you basically meditate all day, every day for 10 days. And it was um, one of the most profound experiences that I've ever had. I've been meditating for a long time, but never that intensely. Like I would do, you know, 10, 15 minutes a day. But then this, meditation retreat was like between four and 12 hours a day of meditation depending on how much you want to do extra so you would wake up meditate and eat meditate it was basically just meditation eating and then walking around the little paths paths that they have for you to walk on and uh it was it was it was wild going from being completely addicted to your phone my phone to just being totally silent and not interacting with anyone the whole time for 10 days is is a wild, wild thing. But it like completely changed my emotional state and my perspective on things. And I had done one of these meditation retreats the year before and it was super impactful then, but I was in a much better mindset at that time because my grandpa was still alive. I wasn't at all anxious or depressed or anything like that. So it was still, immensely helpful the first time but the second time seemed to be seemed to have even more of an impact i think just because of how sad i was going into it and i remember when the second one started especially the first couple of days it was so difficult to just be sitting with your thoughts these thoughts that you were trying that i was trying so desperately to not think about for so long that's why i was sleeping all the time i just didn't want to i didn't want to think and <laughs> meditation really, you know, it, it 
brings these thoughts to the front of your mind and then with the technique allows you to let go of them. So even though it's really difficult initially when these thoughts come up, the meditation allows you to see them for what they really are, which is just thoughts. They have no impact on whether or not you're okay unless you let them. It allows you to disassociate from the thoughts that you're having and experience the reality of the moment and what's actually happening. You breathing, whatever's going on in front of you at that particular moment, it allows you to come in touch with that rather than being constantly in your head about all of the things that you're thinking about. It was crazy because I went from what felt like the lowest point in my life emotionally to a state of what felt like at the time total equilibrium and not feeling uh, any of the feelings that I had before. And maybe it's not that I wasn't feeling them, but I, it was just I had a different outlook on them. You only, you only start like looking forward to feelings, even the ones that make you sad and make you cry. Because one of the things that you learn in the retreat is that they call it anicca, which is impermanence. Everything comes and goes. All of the feelings that you have are impermanent. Everything is impermanent. So you just learn to focus on that aspect of the feelings and appreciate them and observe them rather than trying to make them go away. It was like a, a realization that the suppression of feelings, feeling like you can't feel how you feel, is what creates the suffering. The feelings themselves, if you just allow yourself to experience them, are impermanent and come and go, and are anicca. And that really helped me come to terms with the death of my grandpa, just recognizing that we're all gonna die, and really we should just be thankful for the time that we get to have with the people we love and this incredible experience that we get to have every day. And since then, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't really felt that anything like that in terms of anxiety or depression. It's just a shift in outlook, I guess, is what I took away from that retreat. And they recommend that you do one retreat a year and then you're supposed to meditate an hour in the morning and an hour in the evening every day. That's what, just what they recommend for best uh, benefits or results. And I did that for a long time, for like five months. I was hitting two hours of meditation a day and it was just so awesome. <laughs> so now I've dropped into more of like, it's closer to an hour a day, but it's still just doing consistent meditation, regardless of how long you're doing it for, really can change your life. It will change your life. So if you're someone who's been going through experiences like that, or even if not, I mean, it's beneficial for everyone, whoever you are, whatever it is that you're going through. And if you're happy, then that's even, you know, it still work wonders. So I'd highly recommend it. And I'll link it in the description of this video. So that's why I've been gone. And the thing about something like YouTube is that once you fall out of the rhythm and routine of posting, it's very hard to get back into it. It's kind of like going to the gym. So if you're watching this or hearing this, thank you. Thanks for all of the support and, and the, the comments on the videos have been really incredible. And uh, I plan to be back for good. So expect a lot more content coming soon. Peace.